Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review for the brand new Transformers Studio Series 86, number 15, Dinobot Sludge. Sludge is the third leader class Dinobot that we received in Studio Series 86, rounding out the original trio of Dinobots from the cartoon. He is luckily an entirely new mold, despite the aesthetic similarities to his teammates Grimlock and Slug, or Slag. It does make me wonder what they're going to do with all these molds in the future, because Hasbro usually likes to get at least two uses out of each one, so we'll have to see. But this new toy represents a relatively in-scale, cartoon accurate, or specifically Transformers the movie accurate, take on Sludge. That being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toy's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll get a quick look at the instructions, and then we'll see Sludge himself in both dino and robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Sludge comes in your new closed box version of Leader Class Packaging that started with the Studio Series 86 Starscream. As such, he has this really nice bit of artwork of him storming into the Quintesson Pit of Judgment and just thrashing these Sharktacons, which do appear to be made to be somewhat toy accurate. He's got like the little holes in the bottom of their feet. I don't know, that might just be like the artist's twist on him though. You can see he's shooting his flame or plasma breath at them. And just like the other Dinobots that have been released so far, he has this little, you know, barrel or nozzle thing inside his mouth so you can attach fire blast effects to actually make him be able to do that. If we look on the side of the box here, you just get a real close up of Sludge's face. And then on the back, we get renders of the toy in both beast and robot modes. He takes 31 steps to transform, which I believe puts him roughly on par with the other Dinobots, more or less. He includes the Mockery of Justice backdrop, which I think is the same one that Slug came with. And then over here, we get some flavor text for him that says, Dinobot Sludge breaks down the courtroom door and crashes the Quintesson trial. So that really fits the MO of these Studio Series toys, where your blurb or your flavor text usually depicts something that happens in the movie. So in this case, it is Sludge, you know, breaking down the door. I do think it's a shame they didn't give him the, uh, the googly eyes, like, as an accessory for when Devastator stomps on him at the beginning of the movie. That would have been really nice. All right, so that's the box. These, uh, box sections are gonna be a lot shorter without a toy to look at, huh? <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just a plain box now. The artwork is great, but I'm still not crazy about not being able to see what's inside. So here's our instruction sheet for Sludge. So you got your usual name, your branding, his number, and a render right there in the middle, along with the Transformers the Movie logo. Right here, we just get some assembly instructions for attaching the dinosaur head, because it comes detached out of the package. Shows you how to have him wield his cannon here. And then we just get straight to the transformation. So it goes all the way to the end, continues around on the back, until you get the finalized beast mode. And then lastly, a panel showing you how to attach his cannon to the underside of the beast mode. So, not overly complex. You know, he's just a simple two-mode transformer with a gun, and that's all you really need. And here is our big boy in his dinosaur mode. And you can see, he's got some mass to him. He's quite a good size for a leader class, which is something we haven't seen too much of these days, with the likes of, you know, Blitzwing being, you know, the kind of on the small side for a Voyager, which makes it especially egregious that he's a leader class with, I don't know, Hulk hands. So, you know, getting back to traditional large leaders is always a little bit refreshing. Now, this guy, you may have noticed, does not come with a pack-in partner like his teammates Grimlock and Slug. The trade-off, however, is that he weighs about 50 grams more than the heaviest of those two, and that's including their pack-in partners. So, you know, they kind of recycle that mass into the toy itself, and you can actually really feel the difference in heft. Even though he's somewhat similar in size to them, he is bulkier, and he is a lot heavier. So, as far as the amount of plastic you're getting, you're not really missing out on anything. And honestly, if I had to choose between another, you know, unarticulated, really hollow, really bad-looking pack-in partner, or getting a more fleshed-out Dinobot, I'm gonna go for the more fleshed-out Dinobot. Now, of course, I am still disappointed that he doesn't have a sword. I'd be shocked if he came with any swords, considering he is the biggest Dinobot we've received at this price point so far. 
and I imagine that Snarl isn't going to come with one either. So the only thing I can really hope for at this point is that they'll release Swoop as a leader class, and he'll be roughly Voyager sized, but maybe come with the swords of his teammates plus himself. That I think would be the happiest I'll ever be with the whole like Voyager with extra accessories being sold as a leader, because at least his accessories would be useful and almost kind of a requirement for his teammates. So we'll see what happens there. Anyway, let's get a good look at this guy's articulation. So his neck moves up and down on a very soft ratchet. The head also moves up and down. Doesn't rotate, sadly. Jaw opens, and he has that really cool little uh, port inside his mouth for, you know, fire blast effects, which uh, one thing I like about this, you see the port isn't painted like the rest of his head. It's just left as black plastic. And while it makes it not match so well, it's actually very smart because one thing we've learned since uh, War for Cybertron started and started having those rubberized blast effects is that those things, when they're left on a piece of painted plastic over time, tend to strip the paint off of the plastic. So I think it is smart leaving this bit unpainted. That way you're not gonna have damage to your toy by displaying it with some you know cool fire breath or something. Speaking of fire blast effects, Here's one that I've stolen from the Tricranius set. So that looks like, you know, some sort of a flame breath. Let's see if it'll fit in here. This part might be too wide. Let's try taking that bit off. Uh-oh. <laughs> see, unfortunately, this doesn't hinge inside the mouth or anything. It's kind of tied to the upper jaw. So you are kind of limited with what you can actually store in here. All right, so that's about the biggest I can get in there. Um, I'm sure there are longer, thinner ones you can use, but that is saying it's a bit of a shame that you know the execution isn't really great. It would have been much nicer if this was a piece that can move on a hinge back and forth independent of the mouth so you can kind of bring it down toward the center more. Because if you get it more centered, you could probably fit this whole combined piece in there. Uh, so that's that's a real shame. Like that that would have worked right there, but oh well. Uh, I'll give it a I know, A for effort, but like a C for execution because it can't fit a very wide range of those effects. All right, so moving on with posability. So his front legs can swing back and forth. It can rotate and it actually has an ankle rock, which is cool. The hind legs can also go back and forth. They can flare out a bit if you want them to and also rotate. And then they get this hinge right here. Technically there's two hinges, but you're supposed to leave this one kind of bent back. Could always bring it forward if you want to. All right, and that's really it for articulation. The tail doesn't move or anything. And then he gets his weapon storage on the underside. So this, I kind of simultaneously love it and hate it. I love where you can store his weapon because it's the most uh, out of the way that we have for the Dinobot so far. Right, like Grimlock sits on his back and it's very, very visible. And then Slugs actually forms the end of his tail which normally wouldn't be a bad thing in of itself, except when you're trying to create these uh, G1 or movie accurate toys, the fact that without that cannon on the underside, his tail looks incomplete, always kind of bothered me. I think this is kind of the best way to go, where it's just tucked up inside. And it's very reminiscent of like an old Beast Wars toy. However, the recess that this goes into is just a big old empty space right where his chest should be. And that's bad. It really bothers me that there's not like panels or something that fold out and fill this in. Cause I mean, look at that. Look at that. Looks like, you know, he took a giant like shrapnel blast to the chest or something. And now he's like missing part of himself. So yeah, it doesn't look great. And yeah, I get it's the underside, but at a later price point, I do expect something a little more complete looking. So it doesn't ruin it for me, but that's probably my least favorite thing about the beast mode is just the big old gaping hole where his chest should be. Now here's a look at the other most recent interpretations of Generation 1 Sludge. On the right, we have the Power of the Prime Sludge toy done up in very toy-based colors. And then we have his recolor, the Generation Select Sludge, done up in something closer to his on-screen appearance, though still utilizing a lot of the toy tricks, like the layering of transparent plastic over the gold and everything. So he's kind of somewhere in between. Um, this guy's going for, you know, much more cartoon or movie accuracy than either of these two. Though, as we can see, he still gets a lot of surface detailing to not make him look plain and boring, which I think is a good compromise. Like, I really like the idea of, you know, I get they're going to go with the movie colors and all that because it is studio series, but the fact that they don't just leave these things like flat panels and give them a lot of sculpted detail, 
is something that I really appreciate and something you know I've appreciated about his two teammates that have been uh, released so far. And I imagine it's going to continue for the two remaining Dinobots, so that's really cool. Now, whenever one of these Studio Series Dinobots gets released, the question of a Toy Colors version always inevitably comes up. Now, I'm not opposed to them releasing Toy Colors versions of these guys. Getting, you know, this toy, but in colors like this. Um, and, you know, obviously the other Dinobots, too. Now, like I said, not opposed to it. Though I'm not sure if I'm really willing to go all in on these molds again at full price for something that's just kind of a minor toy repaint. Because leader classes are expensive. They're getting near $60 here in the US now. So for a team of five Dinobots at 60 bucks a piece, you're looking at about $300. It'll be more than 300 after tax. That's quite a bit. So I think the only way I'd be really uh, eager or excited to pick up like a full set of toy color Dinobots at the leader price point would be if it was released as a box set with a discount against, you know, the price of five individual leaders and maybe get it for something like 200, you know, maybe get like a 50% discount, something like that I would be okay with. Aside from toy color decos, I'm not sure what else they would do. They could go the shattered glass route, though I think the only one of the Dinobots that was really prominently featured in Shattered Glass was Grimlock. So I would say he's the most likely to get an SG recolor. I don't know about these guys. I don't know if they'd go all in on it, but I do have a hard time believing they're not going to reuse these molds at some point because they're big molds. They're very popular characters. It's money on the table. We'll just have to see what they do. But I do like the idea of getting something that looks like this with, you know, a lot more of the silvers, a lot more black to it. And that cool, you know, clear over copper gold coloration. Plus, you know, the red eyes. That was something that was a staple of the toy Dinobots that got scrapped in the cartoon because the cartoon largely held to the philosophy of Autobots have blue eyes, Decepticons have red eyes. So as one of the biggest differences between them and their toys, just the eye color. There's a lot more variation in the toys themselves where their eyes could be red, blue, yellow, green, black, whatever. Um, the cartoon kept it much simpler because, you know, they were marketing towards kids and at the time i guess they assumed kids had a very short attention span or something i don't know i mean they kind of do but i i give children more credit than that <laughs> i don't think it would have been very confusing if you had like a yellow eye sound wave but whatever now of course we had to get a group shot with the two teammates that have been released in studio series which are grimlock and slug aka slag and this actually completes the original trio of dinobots Snarl and Swoop didn't actually come until later. These were the first three that were created by Wheeljack in the cartoon. So in one way, we've already completed a collection. Now, would I be happy if they stopped here? Of course not, especially since Swoop is one of my favorites. Like for me, it's kind of Grimlock and then Swoop and then the other guys. They're so similar to each other that none of them really stand out to me design wise. So yeah, I would be very, very unhappy with Hasbro and Takara if they just said, you know what, we're just gonna stop at three. That's all you guys need. Now, I do believe we've uncovered listings for future toys. I think there is a leader class uh, Snarl coming sometime like next year, I believe. I don't think we've seen anything on Swoop, like nothing concrete yet. So nobody knows what his size class will be. I think size-wise, he could easily fit into the Voyager price point. But at this point, because these guys feel so incomplete without all their weapons, I would greatly prefer paying leader prices for him and just him including the swords for all of his teammates because that's something that just really, really bothers me. Like, I get that they didn't have their swords in the movie, but, I mean, Daniel didn't ride slag in the movie either, so, uh, yeah, it, it's it's very inconsistent, the reasoning for why certain things are or aren't included. I think, you know, stuff just kind of happens, and then they have to just come up with reasons for it happening after the fact when people ask questions. So, yeah, I'm really digging this, though. You know, these guys, they all look great together. Uh, they aesthetically look very, very similar. Like, there are slight variations in the certain shades of gold and gray and stuff used, but you have to really be looking for those differences to notice them. I think they look awesome. I really do. They look like a real cohesive team that are more or less in scale with each other, and it's something you don't always get these days. Hasbro and Takara have been really bad about completing classic, like, Generation 1 teams. You know, we saw with the MicroMasters how almost none of those teams got completed. We usually got two out of the four. And then, of course, there's always other subgroups like the Throttle Bots or Spark Bots and stuff. Uh, and then if they ever do get 
you know, all the members, they're usually at different scales or different aesthetics. So we'll see. I'm hoping that they see the feedback where people really, really want complete teams. I know they've mentioned it and they have addressed it. So it looks like they are putting a greater focus on trying to make that a reality and trying to work it in there despite, you know, restrictions from budget and the market and, you know, the bean counters over at Hasbro and Takara. Uh, so, you know, I'm pretty excited because right now the team is looking awesome and I really can't wait to get the other two members. And I also just love the fact that they're big, right? The last time we got a complete team of Dinobots was Power of the Primes. And then of course, you know, they had the recolors of them in Generation Selects, but they were so tiny. They were all just deluxes. And then Grimlock was like a, you know, pretty small Voyager. And it just never made sense to have them be that small. I get it from a marketing perspective. I know I, I get into this all the time about like Volcanicus and Predaking and how Predaking should have been you know, Voyager and Deluxe size, and Volcanicus should have been the Titan. But I also get how it'd be hard to sell a box set of a new combiner. And yeah, yeah, I, I get it. But at the same time, the most recent new Titan we received was the Ark that turned into a robot that was completely original. So I don't know if I buy that reasoning, you know? Like people recognize the Ark, but they don't recognize the Titan it turns into, just like people would know the Dinobots, but not necessarily the combiner they would turn into. So I... I think it would have worked. I mean, that ship is long sailed. I'm beating a dead horse. It's, you know, falling to pieces in front of me. I'm beating it so much, but it's always going to bother me. <laughs> we could have had our definitive Dinobots like way back when, but yeah, they did what they did. And now we're going to have to kind of go into this team a second time to finally get them at a proper size and scale. So it is what it is. All right, now it is time to transform Sludge to his robot mode. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove his weapon, just set it aside. Then we are going to pull this back section up and it's gonna untab from here and you have to kind of wriggle it free from the sides of the tail like so. You just kind of leave it alone. Right, then we are going to open up these shell halves the lettuce. There we go. They're on a double hinge, so you want to swing them all the way out. You may need to like move his hind legs out of the way to do that. So you get that. We're gonna go ahead. Oops, sorry. Flip these up. Fold them in. Just kind of keep them sticking out like that for now. Keep them out of the way. You're gonna detach this from these little plugs here, and just again get out of the way. Bring the robot head up, and just kind of bring this back like so. All right, then we're going to lift the robot chest piece and the arms off these tabs, rotate it 180, bring it back, put it plugs in, bring the arms out in front of him just to get him out of the way again. All right, then rotate him at the waist. Bring these down. They're on a double hinge assembly, so kind of separate them, bring them down, like so. Gonna swing these out, swing these out, straighten the legs out, like so. So, do that, straighten the legs. All right, gonna straighten the feet out. You're going to fold all this in, so that folds in, bring it over, and fold it in again, put tabs in right, and then fold that in until tabs in. So the same thing here, all right, so we got the feet put together, and you can see how he's utilizing some fake parts here. Those gold bits that go on his back are taking the place of the tips of his feet, where they would normally go on the old toy. Uh, just for a cleaner look. So they kind of went the same route they did with uh, Slug or Slag, where they're using some fake parts just to get that screen accuracy. All right, Let's see there's a hinge here. You wanna pop that first hinge in until it clicks. All right, so they're doing that, and that's not an approach that I'm really crazy about. Uh, if you know me, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that fake parts really aren't my preferred method. I, I feel like it violates the integrity of the transformation. Now, in some cases, I can be okay with it, 
you know, just kind of accept it if they at least, you know, hide away the fake parts. And they do, they do a good job of that here. You can make out kind of the, the side of that gold bit right there, but it's nothing really intrusive, you know, it's still flat. It's not obvious what that is by looking at the robot mode. So even though I'd prefer them not go that route, I think it's okay. Same thing with slag. They do a good job of, you know, just kind of hiding things away. All right here, you're gonna flip his fists out. And unlike slag, they don't click into place like these panels. But if you turn his fist around, it no longer has the clearance to go all the way in, though it can go in a little bit, which is kind of annoying. And you rotate the bicep to get his arm in the robot mode. Same thing here. Fist out, rotate, rotate again, bring it down. All right, and then we're just gonna kind of clean things up. So bring the dyno legs down, kind of point the toes a little bit, push this in, and just kind of collapse it all down. All right, so here now is our robot mode. It looks really cool, just as is, but of course, you wanna have the weapon, so you can go ahead and place that in either hand. Though by default, he wields it in his right. There it is. This is Sludge's robot mode, and it looks like Generation 1 Sludge. It looks really, really good. He's got some pretty narrow eyes. They're kind of hard to see, but they are blue, like they are in the cartoon. Um, you know, he's definitely a big Transformer, like pretty adequately leader size, at least in, you know, modern scale. And he's got some good posability. So the head is on a swivel but it's also on a panel that can raise up a little bit so you can have him looking upward. It doesn't really go down very far because his chin gets in the way, but you, know, you can at least look up, which is cool. He has ratcheted universal shoulders. Well, at least the ratchet on the back and forth motion and just a uh, regular hinge here. He's got the bicep swivel. He technically has double bend elbows because you can pop that first hinge free again and bend his elbow deeper if you want to. So that's really cool. He has the wrist swivel, which is awesome. He's got a full waist swivel. Those kibble might get in the way of it a little bit. You may have to just kind of flare the kibble out. He's got universal hips, and I want to talk about these. So they do, you know, you get that full range of motion. They go out, they go back and forth. Uh, the ratchet on these is quite soft. And when I got this guy out of the box, I was actually having an issue to where the ratchet was way, way too loose. And what was happening is he was flopping backwards like this under his own weight, and it was almost impossible to pose him at all. Like he had to really kind of get his legs up underneath him to even make him stand up. And uh, luckily I was talking to some people about that and the ever awesome Larkin from Larkin's Lair. He's a fellow, you know, YouTuber. He does a lot of 3D printing, like third party accessories and stuff. So, you know, if you somehow don't know who he is already, go ahead and look him up. You know, go ahead and follow him, check his stuff out. He's very cool. Uh, he, you know, suggested to me that I tighten the screws in the back of the pelvic piece right here. And while the ratchet is still softer than I'd like, and if I like, you know, kind of smack him hard enough, he'll still fall back. It's a lot better than it was. Um, a lot more manageable because I thought for sure I was going to have to return this guy after I opened him because uh, he really just would not stand up and it was a real problem. So thankfully that has been more or less fixed. Again, I could... Definitely stand for that ratchet to be a lot tighter and a lot stronger. I mean, heck, his shoulder ratchets are way stronger than the hip ratchets, which is a real shame. Because the hip ratchets have to bear a lot of weight. Uh, and when you see the other two Dinobots, their hips are much, much better at sporting weight. So they really drop the ball there. I don't know, based on other people's copies, if he is generally looser than the other two. I'm leaning toward he probably is, because even after tightening the screws down, you know, as hard as I could without fearing stripping them out, uh, it's still very weak. And that's something that I think really needs to be addressed in like a running change or something because he's heavier than the other two. So he has the greatest need for strong hip joints. And again, this is the first use of this mold. So it's not like there's degradation going on. This is all new. I don't know why his ratchets are so much weaker than the other two. I don't know if it's like cost cutting or just an oversight. But it's something I hope we don't see repeat more and more over time. All right, getting back to his posability, he does have thigh swivel. He has single bend knees, but they get pretty deep, as you can see. Pretty much get a nice flush 90. And I like how they recessed the back of the lower leg so you can actually get that bend instead of, you know, it's getting stuck about there or so. So that is a nice touch. And then, of course, he has ankle tilt. So very, very posable. 
And as long as the ratchets in your copy are strong enough or the screws are tight enough, he will, you know, be able to get a pretty wide variety of poses without, you know, need for additional support. So I like him. He looks really good. Again, tolerances could be a little better in those hips. But aside from that, he is just an awesome, awesome sludge figure. I mean, really just ticks every box. And his robot mode has fewer differences between like the show version and the 80s toy version than the dino mode does, at least, you know, as far as what's obvious. So he works really well if you're looking to get kind of a, a retro, like G1 toy based collection too. He looks very, very good in this mode for either purpose. And here's our robot mode group shot with the two smaller deluxe sludges. Again, power of the primes on the left, generation selects on the right. Now, if you saw my uh, more recent review of Volcanicus with you know this version of Sludge, I mentioned how Sludge was probably my least favorite out of those Power of the Primes based Dinobots, uh, mainly because they made him very lanky in appearance, and I always just thought he looked the most off out of all the Dinobots. I really didn't like the proportions on him, and he really didn't feel like that character. And I still you know stick to that. Plus, I always thought his wings were just set a little bit too low. Uh, this guy really rectifies that. He is a big, wide, really awesome looking Dinobot. He's even got like the nice wide, broad facial features where these guys have kind of like a little skinny face with a, uh, I don't know, thimble shaped helmet. And it just, I really dig the way that he came out here. And I think it's a huge improvement over this design. Now, obviously, you know, a leader class is going to be more complex and have more engineering than a deluxe, but still, um, Really, they just fixed everything that I didn't like about, you know, this version of that character. So I feel that for the first time, we're finally getting a good update of the Sludge toy. And again, that's something I feel really was compromised by the fact that they downsized the Dinobots, made them, you know, Scramble City compatible instead of just making them a unique combiner that didn't need to adhere to that whole system and, you know, would have allowed them to be a little more unique in their engineering and look closer to, you know, the real deal. So, yeah, I think all those issues that people had with the, you know, Prime Wars Dinobots really just stemmed from that decision to do them at the scale and do them, you know, with that interchangeability in mind. Now, I like the Scramble City concept, but when you apply it to characters that were never built for it, you can see the results really aren't stellar. So in the case of the Dinobots, if you're not going to make them some huge Titan class combiner with his own engineering, your next best thing is to just produce them individually and make them as accurate as possible. And I think this guy is all the better for it. And of course, we got to get our robot mode group shot with the other Dinobots. And you can see they really look just absolutely stellar together. These guys all end up being almost the exact same height. I think Sludge is just ever so slightly taller than his teammates, and I'm not counting like the dino hood that uh, Slag gets, but just going to their heads, he's just got a little bit more, and that's primarily due to, you know, the prominent crest and stuff on his head. But I mean, it works. They are like perfectly in scale with each other, so I really just love the way this came out. And I really have to give props to the design team for making these guys like so consistently good. Now Grimlock being the first one, he had some very small shortcomings, like the obvious, you know, open forearms that these guys rectified by having the fists fold into the bottom of the feet rather than into the sides of the legs. And just kind of some small things that they kind of perfected when they did slag slash uh, slug here. And they kind of carried a lot of knowledge over into sludge because he copies a lot of the same tricks that Slag utilizes, like the hinged uh, neck stump and, you know, making everything kind of fold up more neatly and less, you know, obviously chunky kibble hanging off of him. So I think even though Grimlock may feel very slightly dated compared to these two, they still make for the most perfect representation of these characters we've ever had in an official plastic form. And seeing the three together is just so cool and gets me so pumped for finally getting the other two teammates and completing the whole set. I'm also going to need my alternate camera stand and like zoom way way out when I finally get the other two because it's going to be a very big group shot with how large these guys are. So yeah I mean it's just it's very satisfying when you're a longtime collector and you know you're always wanting to like finish up your teams and get your classic characters all together looking very cool. You want to see it right? You, you, you 
strive to get these teams completed and have these certain sections of your collection finally kind of checked off. And even though we did technically get the full team of Dinobots in Power of the Primes and Selects, they never felt right. They were very compromised. And here, you know, there's no crazy gimmicks to force in there. You know, there's no out of scale weirdness. These guys are all the right size and they look great with each other. They look great with other generations figures, you know, both your Studio Series 86, your War for Cybertron, your Legacy. They fit in, which is something I like to see. I, I love the fact that they're really focusing on a unified aesthetic and a unified scale since they started with War for Cybertron. And even though there are some slight variations, like the uh, War for Cybertron Legacy stuff has more of a focus on five millimeter ports and all that, when you look at it, you know, broad scale, as far as the just main focus of the designs and the way they look, they work. They do generally lean more toward cartoon accuracy than they used to, back with like Prime Wars and stuff, but they still make sure to mix in enough realism to where, you know, you don't get these hyper cartoony, very flat looking toys mixed in with toys that have a little bit more realism. They have just the right amount of realism in their coloring and their surface detailing to where these guys can easily fit in with a modern collection. And this is going to complete our look at the all new Studio Series Sludge. I am a huge fan of this toy. I think it came out near perfect. My only issue again is the hip ratchets. Mine are quite weak and as I said I had to go ahead and tighten the screws just to make this guy be able to stand up on his own. So if you do get this guy out of the box and he is flopping over, I would highly recommend trying to tighten those screws in the back of his pelvic area. Just be careful, you are putting a metal screw into plastic and if you put too much torque on it, you're just gonna strip out the threading and then it's gonna be useless. So be very smart, you know, feel it out and feel how tight it's getting. Don't just wrench on it. I do recommend a smaller screwdriver so, you know, you just by default get less torque so it's not as easy to strip it out. And just be smart. But uh, you know, if you don't have that issue or you do have it, you can fix it. I think that you're gonna find this guy is quite good, even if the ratchets aren't as good as they are on his teammates. Uh, design wise, I think he's fantastic. The dino mode is great. I'm not crazy about the hollow chest. I wish they could have done something to fix that, but I also understand that you know, when they're prioritizing engineering, they're not really worried about the underside of the dino mode too much. So, you know, minor nitpick. I like that he has the best weapon storage out of the three Dinobots so far. And I think the robot mode is also great. I mean, it's got that bulk, it's got that heft to it that was really missing from the previous version of Sludge. And um, he feels just, I don't know, he feels meatier. And he is meatier. You know, like I said, he is about 50 grams heavier than Grimlock, which isn't a massive difference. But when you consider that, you know, that includes Grimlock's partner Wheelie, you know, he's definitely more toy. And his engineering is a bit better than Grimlock's too. So I don't feel that we're getting a lesser value here. Like even though he doesn't include the same number of accessories, there's just more substance to him and he just feels better overall. So I think if you're collecting the G1 Dinobots, you've been you know kind of holding out on the sky or wondering if he's worth it, I think he's absolutely worth it. I think he's a great piece in both modes, whether you want to display him in his Dino mode or his Beast mode, he looks phenomenal with the other two Dinobots and I'm sure you know the two that are coming will look great with him too. And he'll just look very good in a Generations collection course that is just how i feel about sludge so now i want to know what you all think of him are you planning on picking this guy up or if you have him already are you enjoying him uh do you have the same hip issues that mine is having or is yours nice and tight is yours as tight as you know your grimlock and your slag maybe i just have a defective copy who knows maybe you don't want this toy uh do you just don't want to collect a big expensive dinobot you're not interested in this particular dinobot because he's probably the least famous out of all of them if i'm being honest right um, maybe Snarl might be less famous than him, but Slug is usually just, or Sludge, sorry, is just usually kind of ignored. Uh, whatever your reasoning, any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Sludge. With all that said, I will see you next time.